Hi, I'm Arjun from wizards.exe. In this video, we're going to go over gamepad input and telemetry. So the first thing we're going to go over is gamepad input. But there's a few things that you need to know before we go over gamepad input, and that is data types. There are two data types we're going to go over, and a data type is essentially like a type of something. So we're going to go over a boolean and float. So I'm going to go over what a boolean value is. So a boolean value is essentially true or false. It can be one of two things. And that is, that applies for most of the buttons on a gamepad, which can either be not pressed or pressed. There's also the joysticks on the gamepad, though. And they have a range of different values. And these are called floats, meaning it can be a number with an, as many decimal points as it, it, you want it to be. That's, what's, that's what we call a float. So there are many different buttons on the game pads. So for first global teams, we have the left trigger, the right trigger, the left bumper, the right bumper, the D-pad left, right, down, and up, as well as the face buttons A, B, X, and Y, as well as the left stick button and the right stick button. Those are all Boolean values. For FTC teams, the left trigger and right trigger will return floats, but for F First global teams, it, they return boolean values, meaning they can either be pressed or not pressed. We also have the joysticks, and those return floats for left stick X, left stick Y, right stick X, and right stick Y. So how the joysticks, how you get the data from the joysticks, is essentially you get the X axis, which is sideways, left and right, and the Y axis, which is up and down, and you get two values for each joystick. One thing to note, though, about the joysticks is that for left and right, left is negative 1x and right is positive 1x, but for up and down, up is negative 1y, while down is positive 1y. So this is something a little bit peculiar. So now we're going to go into um, making a program with them and how to program it. So I'm going to go to the blocks menu, and I'm going to create a new program called Gamepad Test. And now you can see that we have a blank blocks program. I don't want to do anything in the initialization or the run blocks as I want to give us a continuous loop. So we're going to make a gamepad tester right now for testing a few of the buttons. But there's one thing that we haven't gone over. We know how to get input from the gamepad, but then how do I tell that to a driver? So this is where telemetry comes in. When you look at the bottom of your first global or FTC driver station, you can see that there's a big black area with some text. This is where telemetry input comes, meaning that if I give if I add data to telemetry, then it will show up in that black box. So if we go to utilities on the blocks menu, scroll down and go to telemetry, you can see that there are multiple add data blocks. Sorry. So, as well as one final thing, which is telemetry.update. So, these telemetry add data blocks essentially allow you to add a line of data or one input to that black box. And then the telemetry.update block updates the data. So, you want to always have a telemetry.update block at the end of, your, end of your loop. So, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to drag this telemetry.add data block here. And this telemetry add data block requires a key and a text. The key is a data label, meaning that it's going to show up on your um, first global driver station or FTC driver station as verbatim. The text, on the other hand, is what should change. So, for example, if I want to access the gamepad left bumper, I'm going to change the key to left bumper. And hit OK. Now I'm going to go up and I'm going to close utilities and go to gamepad and I'm going to drag left bumper here. And you can see it slides right in and it, it snaps into place, meaning that this works. Now we can do this for many different things, but I'm going to get, you, we can change this on the right side here to have almost any gamepad button. 
So you can see there are many different gamepad buttons. We can choose almost any of them, which can be very useful. We're going to get to have a telemetry for joystick. And one thing that's different about joystick is that it gives a number. So you need to do the telemetry to add data with a key and a number, not a key in the text. I'm going to choose left stick X. Now that I've typed that in, we go back to gamepad and find left stick X. So you can see this is a slightly different type of block as it only has four options, which are the four float options for first global teams. Well, this has all of the Boolean options. Now I'm going to hit save op mode in order to save our program. And I'm going to run this program on our driver station to show what happens. Okay, now I have our fire tablet here. And the first thing I'm going to do is hit start and A in order to initialize the gamepad. Next, I'm going to select gamepad test. I'm going to hit init, and that runs the initialization block, and then hit play. Now here, you can see that for the telemetry for left bumper, it says false, meaning it's not pressed. For um, left stick X, it says 0, 0.0. If I press the left bumper, it changes to true, which is how you get your gamepad input. Now, if I release it, it says false. Now, for the left stick X, you can see that it's a float value, meaning that it can go anywhere from negative 1 to 1. So you can see it can jump out very far because it's a decimal point. So that's something about the telemetry. Now, there's, one, there's two buttons that you might not be sure about, and those are left stick button and right stick button. I'm going to go over those as well as we're going to finish up a gamepad test program so that if you're ever having any trouble with your gamepad, you can make sure that you can figure it out with this. So I'm going to hit stop and return to the block programming menu. Okay, now I'm going to go back to blocks and open up gamepad test. So now you can see that we have two telemetry statements. We're going to need a lot more than that in order to completely make a gamepad test program. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier though is that there's a telemetry.update block. You need to make sure that this block is at the end of your loop as well as it has to be, be behind all other telemetry.addData blocks. There's a lot of buttons on the gamepad so I'm gonna fast forward this but you should be able to follow along and put all of the buttons down. Okay, I found a bug um, in the code, which is really quick fix. I realized that I had set right stick trigger to right bumper. One thing to know about this is in order to duplicate a block in the block programming language, you can click and then hold a block, and this little menu here will open up, which allows you to delete the block, collapse the block, or disable the block, or duplicate the block. Another thing is sometimes the fire tablet isn't big enough to uh, see all of the options in the drop down, so you might have to go back to the block programming menu on the left in order to um, get the correct block you want. Okay, now I've gone through all of the boolean values, we're going to go over to the float values, the finish the rest of the sticks. Okay, now I've finished this gamepad tester and I have every boolean value and every float value. I'm just going to list them out now, just to make sure that you are able to finish this program if you want to make it. So I have left bumper, right bumper left trigger, right trigger, d-pad up, d-pad down, d-pad left, d-pad right, face button A, face button B, face button X, face button Y, left stick button, right stick button, and left stick X, right, right, left, 
left stick X, left stick Y, right stick X, and right stick Y. So this is all of the buttons on your gamepad. Now, this is only one of the gamepads. So you can connect up to two gamepads to your robot for both first global and FTC teams. So if you really wanted to make a, you could make a dual gamepad tester if you wanted to test two gamepads at once. One thing now is I'm going to remember to hit save op mode so that we don't lose the program as unless you hit save op mode, it is not safe. Now we're back in here and I'm going, I've already selected gamepad test as well as initialized the controller. So I'm going to hit in it and play. And now you can see that under telemetry, there are many more inputs. And so we're going to test all of them. So we're going to start off with left bumper. And you can see it's changed to true. When I release it, it changes to false. Right bumper, it does the same. Left trigger, it does the same. Right trigger is currently not working. And so I will have to figure that out. D-pad up is true. D-pad down is true. D-pad left is true. D-pad right triggers. A triggers, B triggers, X triggers, Y triggers. So when I, the left stick and right stick buttons are on your joystick. And so when you click them down, you push them down. That is when your left stick button triggers and your right stick button triggers. For joysticks, left stick X, you can see, is changing. Your left stick Y is changing. Right stick X is changing, and right stick Y is changing. So we can see that almost all of the buttons on our controller work. I'm going to check if there's any bugs in the code. Okay, I found a bug um, in the code, which is really quick fix. I realized that I had set right stick trigger to right bumper. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and email wizards.exe at gmail.com or comment with any questions. Thank you.